now we have discussed the German level and also the European level of regulation. But the question is what's actually coming up, what's in the pipeline? Um, and uh, Fabian just told me that the next guest is also particularly interesting for me because it's uh, what she will tell us is what will happen for all of us and especially also startups and people working in the field of AI. So uh, coming up next um, is um, somebody from a legal perspective. So that's new in this track. Uh, Dr. Ursula Feindor-Schmidt, she's a partner at Lausen Rechtsanwälte. And she will focus on what's in the pipeline for AI and regulation. Please give her a warm welcome. Very glad to have you here. Ah, I think you might be muted or our... Can we hear her? No? Okay. I can tell you people are running around trying to fix it. <laughs> But you can hear us, that's good. So at least one way it's working. Okay, if anybody so. in the... Ah yeah, now we can hear you, amazing. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, okay, great. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. I have 29 minutes left. So thanks for welcoming me. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, Yeah, uh, I had um, heard what uh, Damien said, at least most of it, um, due to technical checks. And of course, what uh, Dorothea said. So, um, my aim would be to give you a little deeper perspective of what's really going to happen, because of course, um, there's a lot of theory out there now, and um, lawyers would like to be a little more specific. So, um, what we are talking about, um, lawyers generally love definitions. So, if we hear artificial intelligence, um, we might have um, all kinds of different understandings. Um, Therefore, lawyers always start with definitions. Um, and this should not only be a lawyer's thing, um, it's also very interesting for you because what's coming up could affect you or it could not. So, therefore, it's really important um, to define who should um, comply with new obligations and by new law. So here's what the European Commission is currently working in. Um, artificial intelligence systems are software. Um, and possibly also hardware systems, but most likely software is included in those systems. So this is the start. We're starting from software. We're starting from something we already know. Of. Um, A specific software. It's a software which is designed by humans. So we are leaving out any system which is actually designed by artificial intelligence. So we always um, look at where we started and we most likely started um, with an invention by a human being. This human being is giving this software a complex goal which is meant to be achieved. And um, the artificial intelligence is then actually acting in a physical or a digital dimension by perceiving its environment through data acquisition. It's interpreting the collected structured or unstructured data, reasoning on the knowledge it has collected, processing information derived from this data, and then make to achieve the goal given. So this is the definition suggested um, by the European Commission's artificial intelligence. 
intelligence high level expert group and i think this is definitely where European um, legislators will start with. So we are not only talking about um, strong AI, um, we are also talking about very simple algorithms interpreting data and then deciding upon a very simple action like um, advertisement being posted um, to a targeted group. So, is that all? Because, um, some um, people that have spoken before, um, with those, it, it, it seems like we had no regulation at all. And now that politicians and lawyers are coming in, um, everything is uh, going to be very unsexy and um, we are uh, preventing things to be done. Um, so is there actually no regulation at all? Well, um, the people who are dealing and producing products uh, with artificial intelligence know probably very well that there is a lot of regulation already in place. We have the General Product Safety Directive of 2001. We have, of course, data protection. Um, we have the Consumer Rights Directive. We have a lot of sectoral legislation, like the Machinery Directive, the Radio Equipment Directive. And we have heaps of like the Computer Program Directive. Uh, we have patent law, trademark law, design and boundary rights law. And of course, overall, we have the fundamental rights, which have to be um, kept and secured uh, with any product. Um, the fundamental rights are expressed in a couple of further directives like the Race Equality Directive or Directive on Equal Treatment in Employment and Occupation. So we already have a lot of things. And there are even more rules. Um, Damien also stated that there are already a lot of standards um, out there. There are general standards from ISO and IEC for software. And uh, then there is sector specific standards like the IEC um, A2304 um, one for health software, for example. There are ISO standards for quality management for software, for um, security standards, and also for standards of use. There are, of course, um, the technical and organizational measures um, you have to be aware of um, with the GDPR. Um, so also here, we already have a lot of uh, regulation uh, which already applies to artificial intelligence products. Now, why do we need more regulation? And this is something that had been addressed by speakers before. Actually, lawmakers, but um, specifically also society, sees gaps in existing law. So um, they said we need enhanced security um, because Artificial intelligence has always something to do with connectivity and openness. Um, and therefore, this could lead, this specific uh, situation could lead to manipulation of third party intruders. As we have discussed a lot today already, there's data dependency, um, which could lead to bias and also to false results. So we have to. Uh, um, this data that is accumulated and curated, and how um, quality is cured for this data. And then we have um, autonomy. Artificial intelligence is acting, at least how society sees it, could act autonomously. Of course, um, every artificial intelligence has been programmed before. Um, but it's taking its own decisions based on a set of data, which is then not again um, scrutinized um, by a human being. Not every step is watched by a human being. 
I mean, that's the purpose um, of AI. There's a lot of fear, uh, German angst, as uh, was mentioned before, about opacity, so that um, society doesn't know what's going on, how those decisions are made, what's the next autonomous decision the AI is taking. There's a high degree of complexity of products and systems and the complexity of value chains. So, um, and therefore, very often, um, product liability laws don't fit very well. They don't fit to services at all. Um, Fault-based liability rules might not, because um, if the artificial intelligence is acting autonomously, there might be no one, it might be no one's fault. And IP laws don't fit either. So what's actually in the pipeline? And um, in this regard, it's quite good that the uh, conference had been delayed a little because in May, there was not so much out. When I first uh, spoke to Fabian, um, the white paper by the European Commission has only leaked um, and nothing else really was, was out there. So, as he already said, um, it seems that uh, the European Commission is acting uh, much faster right now than we were used to it, because um, in former times, when a white paper was out on the table, um, you could at least wait uh, four to six to eight years until this was made into law. this time. So initiatives are on the table. There is the European Commission white paper on AI. And my opinion is even more important and more interesting. The report on AI, IoT and robotic safety and liability. There are a lot of um, specific uh, evaluations on how liability law to AI right now and where are the gaps. So this is really important. Um, the European Parliament then identified that something is missing in this white paper uh, because it doesn't really make any reference to intellectual property rights and the development of artificial intelligence. Uh, so the European Parliament put out a report on this intellectual property rights aspect uh, on only the 2nd of October 20. Um, in parallel, the European Commission yeah. is working on a large package, the Digital yeah. Services Act. Yeah. Um, well, this, this Digital Services Act is to replace um, the e-commerce directive of the year 2000, 20 years old. And um, although artificial... Ursula, can you hear me? Because we can't hear you again. Uh, was, there was some outages in between, so we were always hoping for a bit more constant connection. I don't know if it's your microphone. Now I see myself in various dimensions. That's pretty cool. Um, so um, maybe we can try to reconnect her. I don't know if that's possible. Um, or we, then I don't I, know. Uh, because we just... Can you hear me now? Now, now I can hear you. Okay, that's better. Okay, because I'm actually not doing anything <laughs> other than <laughs> the technical check. Okay. Yeah, that was it was on and off. That was the issue. Uh, so there are oh, millions no. of people working on it. Uh, but so maybe I don't know if if it's your microphone, you can take it out, um, and then we can just in because we have that's a bit, great. we can just jump in. We have 15 minutes left. So if you want to, we can try it again. Can you still? Yeah. yeah? So, oh. What do you want me to do? Cool. If we can just go back maybe one slide. Sure. So this one, the I gaps. Don't, I don't or? see. I, I see myself, not the slide. Let's see. 
The one with the bubbles. <laughs> the one with the bubbles, this one. And 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 there's then no bubble slides yet. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I can't just I can't see it. But maybe we we do this one now and then a, a bit more um, because I think now the part got really interesting. Um, and then yes, oh, yeah, that's true. So that's just interfere yeah. um, if you if you can't hear me because uh, of course I want to I want to tell you all the important <laughs> things and and it's now getting really important. So um, yeah, and I was ready to take notes. So please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So. Um, I, I just start off with this uh, with this slide um, um, where I said what initiatives on regulation are on the table right now. And um, we uh, had the white paper out already since February um, this year. Um, but other uh, important suggestions are coming up as well as um, there is the report on intellectual property rights for the development of artificial intelligence technologies of October 2nd, so that's brand new. Um, then there is the Digital Services Act the Commission is working on right now is a larger package uh, where we just had the uh, consultation process um, and where uh, the, the committees of the, Europea of the European Parliament um, put out their suggestions what to include in such Digital Services Act. I'm coming to this um, later on because the Digital Services Act is going to be really important for you and really important to watch. Um, there are on international level, uh, there are conversations started by the WIPO on intellectual property law and artificial intelligence. And then, as you heard already from Dorothea Beer, um, there are, uh, there's a national strategy for artificial intelligence. The US, of course, had put out uh, special artific artificial intelligence for the American people. And there are a lot of further national efforts. But I totally agree with Damien that, of course, this all only makes sense on an international level because you all want to sell your products to an international crowd. So um, no use uh, for national strategies. Um, without any, any international um, connection. So how um, is the scope of future regulation? Um, how could this be done? And, and we heard a little of this before as well. It could be sector-based, um, which means that um, there is specific laws for single sectors and industries, um, or there could be a risk-based regulation um, by evaluating certain risks for certain types of AI application. This will also consider the sectors, but it's more, um, the, the, the focus is on the risk uh, a certain AI is uh, providing for society and for fundamental rights. So EU strategy seems at the moment to be a little to the, to the right, so a little more risk-based, but they will have sector-specific um, uh, considerations as well. Um, the, the European Commission put out uh, some central goals, and there it gets a little cloudy. So they, they um, have the overall aim to form an ecosystem of trust. Um, they want to consider consumer protection, privacy and data governance, society, uh, societal and um, environmental well-being, protection of fundamental rights, accountability, uh, strengthen trustworthiness in AI and ensures general social um, acceptance of AI. But can we be a little more specific because this would be really helpful for people who like you who are working um, on those products. And I think, yes, uh, we can get a little more specific. So what are the plans? EU legislator um, actually plans for a set of further obligations for products that include AI. Um, there will be very likely special requirements for high-risk applications um, like biometric identification, um, like, of course, in sectors 
um, where there is a significant risk that can be expected to occur, um, like healthcare, like transport, like energy, um, like parts of the public sector. Um, but there it will also be taken into account um, whether the AI application in the sector in question is in addition used in such manner that significant risks are likely to arise. So the second criterion will level down where AI is used, um, but no special risk is involved in the, in the certain usage of uh, this AI. Um, we heard that there might be external regulatory audits and explainability. Um, there could be ex ante, which before you put it in the market, conformity assessment and labeling schemes. Um, there will probably be uh, um, the obligation to inform competent uh, authorities and also to inform users about interaction with AI. Um, there will probably be an obligation for human contact point um, and for redress systems also to uh, um, obtain trust and, and reliability in the system. Um, AI should be technically robust and accurate. This is for all of you. Um, there needs to be quality origin and neutrality of training data to achieve this technical robustness and, robustness and um, accuracy of AI. There will most probably be further rules on, on uh, data protection, probably also data and record keeping to reduce obesity, um, accountability, liability and burden of proof uh, will certainly be um, an area where new rules um, will be set out and um, we at, at the moment the uh, European um, Commission um, makes it obligatory to have a human in control um, and also to provide a risk assessment of the AI that is used. With um, the European Parliament's resolution just now, October 20th, um, we get a first impression of what could already be included in the DSA package. Um, a first draft of the Digital Services Act might already come beginning of December. And we will then see whether um, artificial affiliate artificial intelligence regulation is already included. Um, the European Parliament voted for um, suggestions to at least include information obligations, um, the aim of technical robustment, robustness and accuracy, um, the a special protection um, for data, but also, of course, uh, a check for um, the neutrality, origin, and quality of training data. Um, and most likely, there will also be new rules for accountability, liability, and burden of proof. So, who does have to care? Um, at the moment, um, the plans are that uh, address should be the actor who is best placed to address any potential risk. So this is not only the developer and it is not only the deployer of artificial intelligence. It could be anyone who is in the actual position to stop any kind of infringement. We have seen this in other um, European legislation, um, like for example, the, the possibility to get injunctive orders against intermediaries used for copyright infringement in Article 8 um, of the InfoSoc Directive. Um, so I think this will be an approach um, which is also interesting for you, um, that, that this obligation could hit anyone in the value chain. 
Now, what are the consequences and takeaways uh, from this new plans? First of all, of course, it's annoying for you. Um, regulation always means higher expenses, that's clear. Legal compliance expenses, it's called. But regulation could also save money because it means clarity on responsibility. And this makes it easier to calculate and especially to insure risks. So insurance companies uh, watch out for liability risks. If those liability risks are cloudy, it's much um, more difficult to insure those risks. If there are clear rules you can comply with, like um, accountability and transparency requirements, or also um, conformity and labeling requirements, you can comply with this and therefore reduce, um, for example, your insurance fees and also um, calculate with the risk you are setting out. Um, also, as all of this will come into place um, probably sooner um, than you might uh, think. Um, one could also um, make up their minds um, whether AI-driven business already might require specific contractual frameworks with future anticipating clauses. This is sometimes done when something, something is in the pipeline. It's not really clear um, what the exact wording of a new law will be, um, but clauses in contracts can already frame this um, the for liabilities. Um, also, this can also be taken care of in contracts. So, there's a little more um, I wanted to tell you. Um, I'm actually a copyright media um, and IP lawyer. So um, my focus is also um, on AI and IP. And there are a couple of very interesting questions around AI and IP. I will just use the last three minutes to go through. Um, the first one is, is AI protected by IP? Why is it important? It's very important because it's all about money. Um, because the question is, do I have to license the AI I'm using? And if I'm the developer of an AI, can I eventually license the AI to others? Or is it not protected at all? Is it only my trade secret and I have, um, the, the only option I have is to keep it secret? So um, there are a couple of uh, measures, but nothing is really fitting. It could be a patent, yes, but only if it has a technical effect. Otherwise, just mathematical methods as algorithms are not patentable. Copyright for software, yes, could be, but only if, if it's um, a specific expression of human's own intellectual creation. So there must be some kind of creativity with it. Um, underlying ideas, methods, and principles are not protected. Neighboring for databases, yes, can be, but then it has to be the database, which is uh, the thing that is in infringed. So it's not really fitting either. Um, how about IP as food for AI? Um, AI needs a lot of data. And a lot of this data is actually content protected by copyright. Could be blog posts, newspaper articles, scientific papers, or photographs found in the internet. Um, all of this is copyright protected. There are exceptions to copyright um, with the text and data mining exceptions but it might not actually apply. It's quite narrow, uh, this exception. So you really have to check um, before you're doing this data mining, um, whether the content you're using is copyright protected and whether the things you're doing with it, like reproducing it for your um, AI training is a copyright infringement. Otherwise you really run a high risk of liability. Um, and need to agree to licenses uh, with the right holders. 
third question is, um, is AI creating IP? You certainly um, see that um, AI is capable of um, producing um, art that at least looks like um, art that is protected by copyright. So right now, uh, copyright protection is not given to anything that is produced by AI because creator and holder of a copyright can only be a human being. So at the moment, there is discussion about how um, this can be helped with and whether ownership of copyright, for example, should be um, given to the person that legally prepared and published the work which is created with the help of AI. And in the end, AI might even protect, help protect IP. Um, because uh, as you might have heard, there's a lot of um, discussion around Article 17 um, at the moment of the DSM, um, uh, which requires content identification for uh, platforms like YouTube. Um, with this content identification, AI can actually help to protect IP. Um, of course, it will be interesting whether AI is any uh, any time um, capable to detect something like irony, which is under copyright exceptions. Um, but that's even sometimes for humans um, hard to detect. So um, as you can see, they are already marking um, their satire and irony um, in the because it's obviously so as you have seen, um, and as you have hopefully heard, and my tone is hopefully not off again, the pipeline is long and the pipeline is packed. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ursula. And uh, we're very sorry for all the technical issues in between, but we no heard problem. you very, very well until the end. <laughs> uh, we don't have time for questions. Um, <coughs> Thanks so much for all of this, and I guess there will be a lot of people asking you now questions later. That's fine. Get in my chat. Cool.